Who is that? Oh, it's uh, True Jackson, Lulu, and uh, Ryan. You haven't seen True Jackson VP? Mm. Oh my god, it's awesome. I have all three seasons on DVD. True Jackson gets a chance of a lifetime, which is high by island at VP of his fashion department, and every week she has to navigate the This is not how I saw you at all. Nickelodeon has an abundance of live action shows, if we look back through the years, that all hold their own levels of enjoyment of multiple generations. While there have been some incredibly massive shows that instantly fly into our minds, some sadly fade under the radar more and more as we go on. Some of these smaller shows that may not have lasted as long as some of the big ones out there, or only had shorter runs, there is one show that I constantly think about that pops into my mind from time to time, and that is True Jackson VP. While it would have a decent amount of episodes, I feel that it sadly got overshadowed by the other live-action Nickelodeon shows at the time, like iCarly, Victorious, and Big Time Rush. But that's not to discredit the show itself, as True Jackson VP may just be a hidden gem for Nickelodeon live-action shows, as it had a fun and unique enough premise to stand out from the other shows, and in saying that, could it really compete for your viewership. Today, let's take a look into True Jackson VP, why it may just be worth your time to check out and what happened to it. I'm True Jackson, the new vice president. True Jackson VP is all about True Jackson, a 15-year-old who gets hired by Max Madigan, the famous fashion designer and CEO of Mad Style, after he sees the talent that she has when it comes to knowing fashion, when he notices the alteration she has done to his own work that she is currently wearing, thinking she'd be perfect to be the vice president for the youth apparel division. Following this idea of having someone that has this talent and really knows the youth heavily, being a youth themselves in charge of this operation rather than just a boardroom of suits who aren't as well connected like that is not the worst idea ever. But the stress that comes from the big business world of fashion may not be the dream that it may seem to true as she once thought. Having to navigate the constant struggles from the cutthroat world of business to the battlefields of the office itself, with co-workers who make it no easier. True, played by Kiki Palmer, is an ambitious teen that is fashion forward but extremely work focused when given the opportunity to be the VP going from selling sandwiches in the fashion district of New York City to now being a vice president of a clothing division. She brings aboard her friend Lulu, played by Ashley Argoda, as an assistant or secretary of sorts to help her out in this sometimes high-pressure environment. While she means well, she definitely isn't the best at her job, being more of a nuisance or hindrance to work sometimes, but she is smart and ambitious as well, wanting to succeed along with her best friend. Of course, as all shows are, best friend groups are usually a trio, and the third best friend here is Ryan, played by Matt Shively. He hangs around the office a lot, but for a while isn't even working there until until helping Max as an editor for the company website. He's not as driven as his friends and may not be as smart as them, but he tries his best and provides an extra layer of comedy to the show. Max Madigan, played by Greg Proops, is a pretty layered character, where we get to see his personality shine throughout the show when he's around. From how he speaks to how he conducts his business, he comes off as more of an artist than a CEO, especially with how he handles having True there at the company and how he treats her more so like a protege than just someone who works with him. Someone one that also interacts very often with Max and True is Amanda, played by Danielle Basuti, who is the vice president of the women's fashion division, and seeing how Max has someone so young now on the same technical level as her causes her to be antagonistic towards True, specifically at first, but throughout the show she ends up building a fair level of respect for her. Probably most people's favorite character in the show would be Oscar, played by Ron Butler, who works as the office secretary and operator that always has something to say if you walk by his station in the middle of the office or always being ready for any occasion. He's another funny character that sometimes really knows what to say or says what we're all thinking. To round it out though, there is Jimmy Madigan, played by Robbie Amell, who is Max's nephew that happens to work at Mad Style as well, but here as the male delivery person, you know, for the entire office, and is the love interest for True on the show, as they build up their attraction throughout. Up next, more True Jackson VP. Now, here's more True Jackson VP. Created by Andy Gordon, True Jackson VP would be a show shot in front of a live studio audience and come out of the gate swinging with a large premiere, with nearly 5 million viewers at the time of its premiere on November 8th, 2011. And it was just a fun idea to get behind, a 15-year-old being in a high-up role in the business world, here specifically the fashion business world, but regardless, the concept is genuinely fun. We still get to learn valuable lessons in a more adult-based environment that also can apply to anything 
something outside of it. Since the show deals with fashion specifically, a lot of the comparisons were drawn to the show, calling it an ugly Betty for the teen and younger demographic. Which, sure, both shows do feature the fashion world and the ugly stuff that happens in it. But Ugly Betty is more so a comedy drama, with a young adult who doesn't know about fashion being thrust into working for a fashion magazine. Here, True does know about fashion and gets a job as a kid working for a fashion brand, and it's a straight-up sitcom slapstick comedy and all that. But what really holds this show to a high standard is Kiki and how she plays True. Her character, while having talent and all this ambition, is not this immediately incredible success, having to grow throughout the series as she does fail and stumble along the way, all with her infectious personality and spirit making it an enjoyable and relatable watch. It's nice to see her portrayed in such a realistic way of not being perfect, but we also have to see this from someone who is 15, so of course she won't instantly do great in the industry. She still has a lot to learn in life overall before even worrying about being an adult. This show is her journey, and from that we see her friends' journeys with her as well a little bit. Lulu becomes a lot more invested into the fashion world, and we start seeing what her, no pun intended, true ambitions are. Ryan, well, again, a lot less ambitious in that brain. His journey is more so hanging out for the most part, but specifically though, I do enjoy how Amanda's character grows, having the easiest to anger attitude out there where everything and everyone is an annoyance to her. But we see her start to let her guard down, become a lot closer to True, and even watch her find love. She's a lot more complex than just being this mean character. But Max Madigan is just the embodiment of the word ridiculous. He causes the most random and sometimes, okay, most times, nonsensical situations for the rest of the office to deal with, and I think it offers a lot of fun for the show in general. But his character can switch from this eccentric CEO to a serious and thoughtful boss, mentor, or even a real friend. So for the most part, the characters really help make this show an enjoyable watch. Along with the show, they did try and branch out True Jackson VP to various merchandise like usual, here with some books that were based on the show and their biggest idea was in 2009, releasing a clothing line that would tie into the show called Mad Style by True Jackson. A pretty smart way to directly tie into the series with something that legit makes a lot of sense. For Nickelodeon, this was a first. Outside of releasing merch that just had their properties on it, this would be more so a regular clothing line that would act as being made by True Jackson herself, and it was all available exclusively at Walmart. True Jackson VP was a genuinely fun and well-acted show that gave us mainly a working environment, but from a teen's perspective. It allowed you to see what you'd picture would happen in some form of a business office, but flipping the script to add a teenage flair into it, disrupting the more boring adult culture it would have. Having True deal with adults that act more like children than an actual child, the parallels it builds is that here in the adult workplace, it's no different than just going to high school. You just get paid now. There's petty drama, lots of work to do, and consequences for not doing great. More specifically, taking a look into the fashion world more so than just your regular workplace, but the core building blocks are all very much the same. Most of the time, True is beefing with Amanda, a full-grown adult who is jealous of a kid because she has a similar job title that she has and had to work hard to get it for many years. But I think my only issue with the show is that it didn't have that one extra thing or singular moment that pushed it to be this unforgettable show that stands apart from the rest of the crowd. While it has some things that do that, like mainly being in an office location for the runtime of episodes more so than a school or other locations, it just doesn't have the story or the plot points to differentiate it. Feeling a bit predictable and more of the same we've seen a million times over. Inherently though, that's not always a bad thing. It's how you use these tools while playing within these moments to make it all your own, which I wish this show had some more fun with. Or maybe just some additional flair to the office set itself for background dressing. Either way, I genuinely enjoy the show. I think Kiki Palmer is an incredibly talented actor that really lets her expressions pop on the screen. She's always been a naturally gifted performer, only getting better and better to where her career is now. While I can't say True Jackson VP was my favorite show from its time, I can say that I really enjoyed the show when it originally aired, and I thoroughly enjoyed it once more about 15 years later. Up next, more True Jackson VP. Now here's more True Jackson VP.
the show was pretty star-studded as well, featuring an impressive guest star list, with some of them being John Cena, Ryan Sheckler, Vivica A. Fox, who played True's mom, Willow Smith, who played a younger version of True, heck, Justin Bieber in some earlier Bieber fever days was on the show, mainly to promote music, but you know, neither here nor there, as well as other Nickelodeon stars from the surrounding shows like Victoria Justice, Leon Thomas III, Jeanette McCurdy, Nathan Kress, Tom Kenny, and even Yo Gabba Gabba at one point. The list goes on, but they made sure to fill its over 50 episodes with plenty of interesting people, either playing characters or stopping by as themselves. After three seasons, the show would come to an end on August 20th, 2011. And it was a surprise that it actually had a third season, as originally, season two of the show was supposed to be a healthy size season two with extra episodes ordered, but the show was going into cancellation in 2010, where the decision was to then split season two and save the final batch of episodes for a season three, and have some sort of concrete ending for the show within the final episode that would pay off a bunch of characters' journeys throughout the series, as well as True getting the biggest payoff for all of her hard work in the end. But maybe this isn't the end. Maybe there just might be hope for a reboot or more so a continuation of the show in some shape or form. With the so far success of the slightly more adult iCarly show, and with upcoming projects like Zoe 102, there may be some room on something like Paramount Plus for a True Jackson CEO show. This isn't speculation either, as Kiki Palmer, who has always been extremely talented, and in more recent years has gotten more recognition with that being in films like Jordan Peele's Nope, and also being on top of her game when it comes to social media, being active online and having moments talking directly to the fans, we may have actually got some real details on this. On April 4th, 2021, Kiki Palmer would post on TikTok dancing to the theme song of the show, which is a solid theme song by the way, along with text on screen saying that they canceled True Jackson VP prematurely just to reboot it in 2021. Now this sends some pulses out to the original fans of the show, and just Kiki Palmer fans in general, to start getting hyped for the resurgence of True Jackson VP. Obviously, since this was posted, there has clearly been no reboot produced and released. But that doesn't mean Kiki has forgotten about it, or that the movement on it is dead. Kiki has been dropping info here and there through podcasts or quotes saying that she hopes to offer some news about it soon, but she wants to make sure whatever this reboot of the show is, is worth it for the fans time. Something of quality that has a real reason to have the show be brought back. Our latest update came from October of last year, where she made it clear that she is ready to return as True Jackson and reunite with her old castmates for this project. So who knows what's to come with True Jackson VP, but it is cool to see the passion from Kiki wanting to make this happen and making sure that if it does, that it's done right. But what do you think? Are you a fan of the show and would you like to see it come back at some point? Let me know in the comments. Thanks so much for watching. Like and subscribe. Later. Is that even on anymore? No, we got canceled. Evidently, the people at Nickelodeon don't care about quality entertainment. <laughs>